Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Austria-Hungary. We're really getting towards the end here. I have a feeling this or the next episode should be the last video in this series. One second, excuse me. Um, we have a lot of ships which are in desperate need of a retrofit. <laughs> this is what I'm starting to realize is the war really caught us off guard. A lot of our ships are, uh, well, woefully overdue for a retrofit. But we don't have an opportunity to give that to them. So we have these ships. I actually don't know why um, they're old. Because I did retrofit these guys in 1926 and it's only 1934. I'm not sure what goes into the mechanic. I thought it was just 10 years passing. So either I have some kind of bug here. Because I was like, oh yeah, these are old. These are like 15 years old. But we did retrofit these, right? In 1926, obviously. So, a little confused. Maybe it's like an eight year thing, or maybe it's a variable time frame, but I always thought it was 10 years. Maybe some kind of bug even. Same thing with our Kaiser class, looks like eight years has passed, and these ships are starting to feel the effects of time, and uh, could use a, a bit of a, an upgrade. But, the good news is we have six of our St. George class dreadnoughts roaming the high waters, and uh, I assume at this point that Bren Red Martin has accepted his commission. So we'll go ahead and give him that. I really like the name Arpad though. So I'm going to rename this one Arpad. I thought that, that's a very cool name. So if this ship never gets built in time or if nobody else wants to claim one of the last St. George III classes, um, I'll leave this as Arpad. Plus it's a nice easy name for me to say. <laughs> So the general state of things in the war is we're just kicking butt. We had some a, a nice little rough, dramatic point of time when things weren't going our way. And that's good. That's good uh, for a game to push you a little bit. We've generally had pretty smooth sailing through the whole, huh, no pun intended, through the whole Rule the Wave series um, here. In fact, through all my Rule the Wave series. So it's nice when the game fights back a little more. And it's not that we're trying to avoid a difficult setting. We put ourselves with Austria-Hungary and historical... Did I do historical budget? Perhaps I did not. But I guess that's a, an extreme we could go to. Although in that case, you just end up being massacred by a force three times your size. And on top of that, I think the reason you wouldn't want to do that... Just because you'll end up being blockaded the entire game. So, <laughs> so we have invaded Malta, and we're still fighting to take it. We have sunk a British light cruiser. We do have a lot of submarines. Oh my gosh, 20 ships, holy cow. Wow. They sank one and lost two submarines. We sank 20 and lost one submarine. Yeah, trade disruptions from Raider. And I think submarine sinkings are probably leading to most of those hardships, Great Britain. I'm going to accept because I don't know how many actions we have left in us. Perhaps not many. Oh good, we do have some battle cruisers out. Oot in a boot. Scootin. That means maybe we'll face a uh, comparably sized battle cruiser fleet. Which would be nice. At least we'll get one more um, big, big action in. And again, we're starting very close to a lot of mines, which is good. We, that's a nice fallback point. But we don't have control, so let's go ahead and steam. Whoops. Yeah. Oh. Why did it let us go so far before it didn't say ship spotted? I even thought for a second maybe these were... Austro-Hungarian ships, but they clearly are not. Alright, here we go. So, start forming your normal things, which is line ahead. Another group of Tiger Twos, that's fine. Seems appropriate to be escorting someone outdated. Are these guys are considered old or not? Krakow? Old, yes. Not good, not good. War games? Old, yep. Well, that's fine. I think we don't have the speed to catch these ships if it comes down to a foot race. But I'm going to go ahead and push really fast towards them, neglecting the fact that if they came towards us, we might be able to lure them into a minefield. I think we won't need to do any kind of trickery like that. 
And the Bologna looks like she is a beautiful Achilles class. We'll get her to go to squad max just to hopefully uh, get her disengaging from the battle cruisers. I have to sneeze one second. It's coming. It's not coming. Okay. Hup. It's one of those tricky ones. Okay, here we are. All right, so let's just push on a turn, see uh, what is our response here? What is their response to our move? We want to maintain contact. What the hell? I think I know what's going on now. <laughs> I think I'm figuring it out. <laughs> I believe that we... Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. We have some Tortuga, I mean some St. George class Dreadnoughts here. And this is what I was referring to. Wait. Yeah. So our destroyers are actually engaging them. The, the AI is engaging these battle crews. Well, they are just in terrible shape. There's no way we're going to be able to herd them all the way back down to the T-Mac and the Tortuga, which would have been nice, but... Let's see what else we have going on. Uh, this is somewhere. God knows where I don't. It's a some kind of coastal. <laughs> These are all coastal forts, but I don't know where they are. Possibly it's referring to ones like way over here or something. I I don't know. I'm not gonna look around. They're not near Algiers apparently. And that's all we need to know. So we can keep coastal forces. That tab can remain closed. It would be so wonderful, though, in order for if we could get our um, dreadnoughts involved. I'll see if it's possible. If these guys take the bait and start pursuing, we will, at that point, definitely start uh, turning back towards the dreadnoughts. But right now, it's nice that they're going to be kept busy. Unfortunately, these guys have a max speed of 29. Yes, that's what that's what I thought, and I feared. It's going to be all we can do just to uh, catch up with these guys. They are still launching torpedoes, though. It's pretty fun to see these torpedoes rain in, considering we don't have contact with the initial ship. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. This is good. They are turning... Uh, the destroyers have got them to turn back towards us. So hopefully the Krakow and War Games can open up very quickly here. Ooh, boy. Oh, that doesn't look good. Python, buddy. It looks like you got yourself in, yeah, a serious mess here. Although, whoo, was that a hit? No, they must be right at the edge of their range. Okay, this is still really good. Let's go down to 31. Line of brass turn together. We're going to begin our torpedo run faint. Uh, get the Achilles to roll over the top. And I think we are heading into a, a, a conflict. I think this is going to happen now. Wow, look at that. Krakow opening up from some range and landing a hit. That's a really good sign. All right, keep at it, boys. Holy cow, wow, I forgot to take this turret flash fire stuff off. Kind of ruins this engagement. <laughs> That's a bummer. Hmm. Well, it's gonna make this one pretty simple. Do they have any other fleets around? Perhaps, perhaps not. Sound retribution for the loss of our destroyer. This is uh, the way we like to see it. Slow down a little, allow war games to catch up. This is probably already over though. Yeah, and we're already landing some real serious damage. These are really light ships to begin with. 
didn't really stand much of a chance. Despite their five turrets, we outgunned them. And our gun caliber is also higher, so like just about every way, we're a better ship. But you don't like to see it happen with turret flash fires every single time. Because there's an option which I forgot to enable, which was this. I don't really feel like doing it now because I should do it at the start of an engagement, not right after one of their ships has been blown up. It's possible one of my ships will get a flash fire, and that's the only way this battle will even out. If if they don't get a flash fire, then, um, well, things are over for them anyway. And I'd like to get the Achilles class down here to start hampering their destroyers. Really silly, kind of, for us to sally forth with our destroyers. There's no need for it, considering she's already surely sunk at this point. But let's see if we can get some kind of torpedo launching. And otherwise we'll just get our ships destroyed. <laughs> they finally launched torpedoes. Okay, good. We'll go ahead and close in with both of our ships, endangering a little bit of torpedo uh, counterfire. It's true. Okay, look at that. Our destroyers did their job. Very good. I'm going to return them actually out of um, line of rest just because I think it'll be better. And yeah, I'm sure that their speed is not <laughs> any longer 31. So we're moving in really close, we're just going to try to scare off the remaining destroyers, uh, hit any ships that are still not disabled. Just get the destroyers out of here, they've done their job. I'm going to slow these guys down a little bit more, because I prefer... Yeah, this is what I thought. Ooh, wow. That's actually not good at all. She had a critical hit. I see. So normally you can withstand a few torpedoes, but um, she actually has a critical hit. Flooding a 540. Well, it's almost as worth it at this point to try to max speed her to port because 540 is going to be extremely difficult to control. What's her flooding amount? Yeah, she has apparently four minutes of... Wow, that, she's going to sink in four minutes? I wish. <laughs> I mean, I wish my ships would sink this quickly in general. I, the enemy ships. So we'll come to all stop. Eh, this is what I was... I have to say I'm not really regretting this. It was kind of intentional. Um, I didn't want to cheese my way through this. It was a little suicidal, but uh, I, like I said, kind of intentional. I didn't really did not want uh, to flash fire... Uh, an enemy battle cruiser. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> she got hit by another one. So, <laughs> go ahead, Squad Max. War Games. Get yourself out of here. And we should sink the rest of these guys. Still. Oops. You keep going, but the rest of you guys turn back. And let's engage. So War Games, it's your duty to actually eliminate this ship really close by. Now, um, it's actually probably not worth it for us to lose. Okay, so 18,000, we've lost 34,500 tons and they lost uh, 36,000. That's okay. I'd hate to end the series on such a really anticlimactic video, but that's probably what's going to happen. Okay, well, there we go. So about that turret flash flyer thing, maybe I should have done it anyway. Ah, it doesn't matter. And War Games is hit by a torpedo too. <laughs> well, if we lose both, then it certainly is not a good war for us. We probably are technically losing this one. Pursue. Pursue! Yes, very good. 
Alright, I think we've smashed all the things. So we can go away from slow now, up to fast. Just let everyone, uh, like, yeah. And there it is, it's over. Okay, so we lost our one of our destroyers, one of our battle cruisers. Took medium damage on the other one. Weren't able to get the two dreadnoughts involved. Yeah. A very sloppy engagement, I'm going to admit it. I was bringing those battle cruisers in really close because I, ha I have to say I felt really bad about um, the turret flash fire. Although, yeah, probably battle we would have won anyway. I've been saying that a lot though, and it's better not to say this. So before I forget, let's turn this off. It's possible another uh, we'll have another engagement. Because uh, we're not blockading the British, which means that Germany's not doing its job. Germany could easily blockade them. They have over, they have doubled their dreadnoughts and seven times, no, five times their battle cruisers. But for some reason, they, I guess they're just doing raiding stance, or I'm not exactly sure. We're still invading Malta, right? So they have four other place or three other places we could invade. It would be really nice to get Gibraltar. I don't really care about Cyprus. It'd be nice to get Egypt. Those are two practical locations for us to take. We do have a few extra destroyers now. Those are really right on time. We've been losing quite a few. Jeez, man, uh, the British not doing, I mean, the Germans not doing very well against the British. A British destroyer was sunk and the Germans lost a battle cruiser. No engagements for us this turn. So let's just kind of, let me just look at the distribution of forces we have. So we only have a few in the West Africa and the Caribbean. Three, yeah, our force projection treaty Dreadnoughts are still out there doing their job, but jeez. And again, the Germans, <laughs> the Vorth has been sunk uh, by the British, and the British didn't even lose a ship. Hey, look, it's the image I used for my German um, thumbnails. Oh, hey, we've caught a ship. Very good. So we'll just start getting all the stuff going on. Now the blown is in this one as well. Well, let's get you guys down into line ahead as fast as possible. Squad Max. Oh no, the Taurus is a retard. Navarra class. That's not nice of me to say. Well, what do we have here? I think the Bologna by herself can take on whatever this is. Yeah, okay. We've hit them once. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Uh, an older style ship, I'd say. Still has the weapons on both sides. Still, these are six inch guns. Those are something to be wary of. We're landing the hits early. I'm kind of hoping that... Did I do this? I did. Kind of hoping we launch some torpedoes because we definitely have torpedoes to spare. If I'm not mistaken, we have four per side. I'm sorry, no, six per side. Yeah, we have plenty of torpedoes. And we would really benefit from them dodging so we could get our other light cruiser involved. I don't want to lose her, but let's double back. Like so. It kind of ruined our firing advantage. But I think okay, yeah, we're back in the we're back in the saddle. Yeah, things are really going badly now. I'm a little surprised we still haven't launched torpedoes. 
Okay, the Taurus is caught up. Squad max for us is... Wait. Okay, for you. Got it. But the Taurus can still go 26. This is good. Um, if she tries to escape, which she may, we can actually send our Taurus at max speed and easily catch up. Okay, good. Now Taurus is actually contributing. Not a bad ship. I make fun of the Navara, but... She still gives off a 5, 6 inch broadside. We've been at this so long that uh, we're running out of ammo. Okay, about those torpedoes. How about those torpedoes? There it is. Didn't even need it. So yeah, our Achilles class is extremely good at counter light, light cruiser engagements as well. Not that that really does anything, but, hmm. You know, one idea is actually for us to start retrofitting all these guys. See, 1924 I understand, but I don't understand 1926. Okay, yeah, just build me another one. 27 months. <laughs> oh, yeah, a name. Huh. It's a good question. Um... Uh, you know what, I'll just have to keep it at this. It would be an honorary title anyways, not one that would ever see action, but... Let's do the revolution this time. I think it'll be kind of funny. Even if it causes a revolution in our own um, nation. Because it's at the end of the time frame for this series anyways, right? Oh, wow, it's getting really heated. Oh, revolutionary ideas <laughs> are infecting our workers and soldiers. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> I don't see any unrest change, though. Oh, there it is. Okay, jumped up by two. <laughs> what could happen here is <laughs> the victory points uh, could be reset if somebody else joins... Oh no, this just affects our prestige? I think so. 18 ships, my goodness. Make that 20, 23. I mean, I'm happy Germany's involved in this war simply because she's losing a lot of ships. It's putting us, it's almost fast tracking us to the, well, our goal should be at best second place in the world. Because there's no way we're going to overtake the United States. Probably not any conceivable way we can consider ourselves better than Britain. Even though we've bested them, their fleet is still going to be just bigger than ours. All that money. They have more than 50% more money than we have. Wow, we just sank a British dreadnought with our, our submarines. And I have heard, by the way, that this tactic using submarines does, is extremely effective. I'm not the biggest fan of it still, because it's not, I don't think it's the, it's very, World War One in World War One there was a lot of submarine warfare, um, a lot of sinking of merchant ships as well. Probably it's not known enough for those things, but it still doesn't feel like the spirit of this game to just waltz on in and sink everything with your submarines. I mean, why? There would be no tactical map if we just played that way. Oh, good. We have the uh, a battle cruiser engagement here. Is this an old ship? Yep. Well, we'll just go. Oh, whoops! Can't see what I'm doing. Okay, keep going. Got it. Just in time. All right, squad max. Heave two. She looks smaller than us, if I had to guess. And if it's just one ship, we don't care what it is anyways. We want to sink it. Just make all speed for an intercept course. Now, if we aren't able to identify it soon, yeah, for crying out loud. <laughs> We've gotten several hits off. It is not a battleship. It is an armored merchant, 
Oh boy, this poor our merchant cruiser is already dead. Oh, nope, 39 minutes does not. That was probably the fastest kill if we started from the time of engagement, but from the time it was spotted, not. And I, I guess some of the merit of the four foxes kills were the fact that she identified the enemy ship so quickly. So we'll take nothing away from both of those as we're very efficient. Huge monthly balance. We can do whatever we want. I don't really know what would, there's no, wow. We are actually have been losing a lot of submarines. We're back down to 28. I remember when this screen was something we had to scroll down for. Really good reliability of the submarines as well. Uh, I, th I mean, I'm, in my opinion, if this was to continue for a long time, our best course of action would be to retrofit, but I have a feeling that collapse of the, whoa, we had another hole construction we could have deal. That's impressive. Well, there are lots of complaints. Let's try to decline this cruiser action. Maybe we can get something better. A convoy attack. You know, there's almost nothing in uh, the me the Caribbean except for... Well, actually, these are our forced projection ones, so I'm going to decline. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What we can do is get research up to 10%. Oh, it, oh, it already is. Hmm. I don't even remember doing that. Fighting continues in Malta, and there it is. Well, we really have our pick of the litter as for what to do. We can take one of our ships away from from them, one of their ships away from them. I'm looking at the 48,000 ton ships here. Yep. Okay, so what are these? 10 by 16? 14 by... Can we... Extend the information a little bit. There we go. So they're indomitable battle class, or battle crew. Oh, this is a dreadnought class. How is that a dreadnought class? Its speed is 28. I thought that for sure this would be classified as a battle cruiser. This is just a, essentially a different variation of my St. George class, a hybrid battle cruiser dreadnought. Really, they're just really fast dreadnoughts because uh, they don't sacrifice any armor or armament for speed. They just add tonnage. <laughs> so I guess they're just a dreadnought with superpowers. And I think we'll take the Redoubtable. And 10 points. Well, we could take Ireland. <laughs> we never got Malta, so we'll take this. Cyprus. Um, actually, we'll take Sierra Leone instead. This is actually going to force Great Britain to defend the Mediterranean still, which I find funny. And we get Sierra Le Leone, um, so we get one more province in West Africa. It still leaves a lot to be desired out of our Caribbean holdings, but I don't think it's that bad. We've left, we've now taken Egypt. We got Malta in the end, so uh, that gives us good access to a war against Italy. But I'm going to call this video to a close. In fact, is it time to call this series to a close? I think it is. We've run to 1935. We've accomplished a defeat against one of the two big powers, either Great Britain or the United States. Our ending prestige, I don't remember. I think you should count this only at the point when you cross 1925, because that's when the game ends. So I don't really care about prestige towards the end anyway. As soon as you get over like 40, it just happens to be enough for anything. And I'll sacrifice prestige for budget um, at any point after that. So the famous question I always have at the end of a series is, uh, what would you guys like to see next? This is your opportunity, especially if you've watched faithfully to the end of this series and even the end of this video. I, I really treasure more than just random comments thrown anywhere. Um, the people who have followed the series all along and if you, you have such an interest in what I'm doing, then I have an interest in doing those things. <laughs> I don't know how to say this in an appropriate way, but I, I would like to hear what your comments are. 
for an upcoming series. I was thinking maybe um, a Confederate United States playthrough, the Confederate States of America. Another idea has always been to play Japan. When I play it by myself, if you have ever played this game, I don't know if you have it, but uh, Japan is a really fun nation to play as, especially with their surprise attack, getting surprise attacks on people. But the United States is also a great nation if you're first starting out just because it's so powerful, but they don't have that many sea zones to defend. And it is pretty cool that they don't allow you to cross through the Panama until it was built around what, 1911? Something around there. So if you have ideas, my ideas for a series upcoming, I was actually thinking of returning to Atlantic Fleet to do some of the normal campaign stuff, which is just that linear progression. It's not the dynamic campaign. But, uh, you know, that game, it's simple, and it's not great, but it's entertaining. I would say it's entertaining. So I might return to that. Another idea is, uh, what else do we have? I actually don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I, I guess just leave your comments about where you'd want me to go from here, if you have any. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this entire series. And I'll catch you in the next video.